let's look at how to adjust the Kestrel settings in Visual Studio. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. Now here I have a Blazor server project already created for us. Now, this could also be an API project, a Razor Pages project, MVC project, um, even a WebAssembly, Blazor WebAssembly project, doesn't matter. What the, the big deal here is we have two different local web servers to run this off of. We have Kestrel and we have IS. Now, it never actually says Kestrel anywhere. So yes, it says Kestrel right here. That's because I named the project Tweaking Kestrel. So we can see, we know we, it's implied that we're running Kestrel because the name of the project is what we say play to or run to. But it never really says that anywhere, but that's the, the web server that powers this. And if we hit run here, we'll see that it's going to launch a command type window where we will see uh, the processes that go on and so on. That's actually right over here. So we can see, hey, the hosting lifetime and all these other statements that's showing it. If, you know, if we go over different different pages, we could, you know, if we triggered any more messages, it would show up there. So with that, that's how we host using Kestrel. And if you notice right here, we'll see that the port is 7214. Why 7214? Well, it's a randomly generated number in the 7000 series. So let's look at how we can make some tweaks to this. First of all, if we go over to properties and expand that out, we can see launch settings.json. This is where we can modify these settings. Now you can also modify with a right click and you go to properties. And in here will be the settings as well uh, for modified. We're gonna go right to the JSON file I think this is the easiest place to see and modify things. First up, we'll see IS settings, which is actually kind of a split version. There's IS settings up here, and then down here, there's IS Express actually configured. These are the profiles where we launch our different um, web servers. So notice we have Tweaking Kestrel and IS Express. There's Tweaking Kestrel and IS Express. So we're gonna focus in on Kestrel, but just know that both are here. And the IS Express is actually split between IS Express and the normal IIS settings up here. So with Kestrel, the first thing we can do is this tweaking Kestrel name. That's the project name by default. But if you wanted to say, well, actually, I want this to say what the type is, so I want Kestrel. No problem, you hit save, and now you'll see that when you hit the, the play button, you can see it says Kestrel instead. If you wanted to say, I am Tim Corey, if I can spell it out with capitalization correctly, now it says, I am Tim Corey. So it's whatever you want it to be. We'll say Kestrel, just to be clear. So that's how you change that name to be whatever you want for, for this. Even, same with the IS Express, by the way. But next up, let's look at these ports. So we have application URL. And in here, we have two ports, 7214 and 5214. What's the difference? Well, this is HTTPS as opposed to just HTTP for this one. So we have two different uh, web URLs for our project. It's gonna launch onto the secured version by default and even redirect to that version if we have the default redirect on, which we do. So we have HTTPS redirection. So you can even test that if you wanted to by going to this URL and making sure that it switches over to this URL. But these port numbers have been randomly generated. So this is in the 5000 series, the HTTP version and the HTTPS version is in the 7000 series. If you had a conflict, you can come in here and make changes to this. Let's say we had a conflict with 7214. We wanna say uh, 7123. And we'll change five to the 5123 to match just because. We can save that, we can run this, 
And when we do, we'll see that we're actually going to be launching in on the, the 7123 port. Okay, notice that that new port that I specified as opposed to the 7214 that was originally, which also means you don't have to stay in the 7000 range. Ports really are yours for the choosing. The, the reason why they're 5,000 and above is to just avoid any conflicts or potential conflicts with other applications. So that's why they're up there. If you want to go lower, you can, but just note that you could step on toes of something else. So in theory, you could say 443 here, and if there's nothing else running on 443, then it will properly go to 443, which it seems not to have. Did I not save it? Let's try it again. There we go. Now it's running and now we have failed to bind. So it was forbidden by its access permissions. So it's saying, yeah, we can't go to 443 because you don't have access to do that. And I may even have a conflict in my system. So we're gonna stay away from the, the 1000 range. We're gonna try and stay 5,000 and above, but you can go with other ports if you want. Um, so choose the port that, that works best for you, okay? So you can, you can say, you know what? We're always gonna do 7001 for every one of our projects. Now, the reason why they are now randomized is because of the fact that when you run two projects with Kestrel, if they both had that 5001 and 5000, which was the original settings, if they had that, then the two projects could not run simultaneously because of the fact that they both have the same port number and they can't do that. Now these randomized ports, you can choose to run on different or the same, uh, two different projects on Kestrel at the same time without conflict. So just be careful of that, but you can choose what port you want your project to run on and it will uh, abide by those, those choices. So right now there's 7,001 running just fine. Okay, so that's how you tweak the port numbers. So you've seen how to tweak the name, the port numbers, and then finally this development environment here. This is saying, hey, you're in development, which means we turn on development error messages and all the rest. But if you wanna change it to something else, some other environmental variable name, you could do that. There are some other tweaks to do that, but that's where it gets set. If you were to turn that off, then by default, it's going to assume you're in production. So this does not change the way your code is built. All it changes is what code gets executed based upon whatever you have set up in program.cs. So development. If we're not in that, then use this exception handler and use HSTS. So that's where you would tweak that as well to say anything other than development and that will trigger this section right here. Okay, so those are the, the three big tweaks for Kestrel in your application. They're all in the launch settings.json, which is under the properties folder. So that's how you tweak Kestrel settings in Visual Studio. What was your favorite part of this video? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you want a source code for today's video, use the link in the description. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.